is Susan Weigel, and I'm the Youth Services Manager at the North Regional Library of the Cumberland County Public Library System. Hi, I want to give a shout out to all of my friends at Howard Hall Elementary today in the Spanish Language Immersion Program. Um, over the break, um, I was learning a little bit of Spanish, so I have now know a few Spanish words, and um, I am by no means a very fluent speaker, but I am trying to learn some Spanish words. And so today I would like to share a folk tale with you guys. Um, it is from the Cuban tradition, and also there is a version in Puerto Rico. And the name of the story is the Cockroach Martina. And you say cockroach in Spanish, cucaracha. Would you like to say that with me? Cucaracha. And we're going to be learning the names of some different animals. And so see if you can remember and we'll go back over the animals' names at the end. And I'm going to use my puppets for this today. One day, little cucaracha Martina was sweeping outside when she found a gold coin. Oh, bueno! Well, little cockroach Martina was now 21 days old. It is time for me to marry, I think. And so she went to the store and she bought a wedding dress, a vestido. Oh, oh, muy bonito. Now, I think that I shall sit here and wait for a husband to come find me. Well, it wasn't very, oh, but I've got to do one more thing. Hmm, perhaps I shall have to have a test. Let's see, hmm, I shall bring my book of poetry. Hmm, and now I shall wait. Well, it was not very long before Un Pero came along. Woo, woo. Hey, hola, Senorita Martina. Oh, hola, Senor Perro. Um, you have some um hay, I think, in your mouth, una boca. Oh, oh, thank you, Senorita Martina. Um, I was looking for una esposo. Um, would you marry me? Oh well, what is that there on your paw? Oh, it's some hay. I like to roll in the hay, and I don't like to take baths very much. Oh, and um, what's that on your other paw? Oh, that was some ketchup. I love ketchup on my fritas. Oh, and oh, what's what's that up there? Oh, that was some grape jelly. Oh, Senor Perro, you don't like to take un baño? No, I don't like to take baths. Ah, uh, maybe every month or so. <gasps> oh, no. Well, how would you speak to me in the evening? Oh, I'd go, ruff, 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 ruff. Oh, goodness graciousness. Um, say it. Don't spray it, please. Oh, no. I do not think I can marry you. All right. See you later. Oh, goodness. I do not think I can marry Senor Perro at all. Hmm, I should just wait a little bit longer and we shall see what we shall see. Well, it wasn't very long before Senor Obeja came along. Me, me, hello, Senorita Martina. Oh, hello, Senor Obeja. Oh, how are you doing today? I am doing very good, and I like to play things. I like to play the guitar, and I like to do sports, and I like to do all sorts of things, and oh, goodness graciousness, and I'm just a busy person all day long, and oh, yeah, I'm, you know, well, Dad, I can't be bothered listening to you very often. Oh, so I don't think I can marry him anyways, but I will, how would you speak to me in the evening? Oh, I go, Well, I'll try the other. 
about to Roach Martina, which is a Cuban folk tale, and it's also one you can see from Puerto Rico. Now, it is loosely based on a book. There are many different versions of this. This is an oral story, and if you wanted to see something different, um, Martina the Beautiful Cockroach, a Cuban folk tale by Carmen Agraditi and illustrated by Michael Austin, is at the library. And so you could go to curbside pickup and you could give us a call or you could place a hold on the book and you could ask to check it out. We also have lots of other Spanish resources. Um, we have lots of books in Spanish and I brought a few to share with you. Um, Collins, my very first Spanish dictionary by story uh, by Collins, Harper Collins Publishing. And this is something I use to find out many different Spanish words. Um, we also have Cooking Class Global Feast by Deanna Cook and Story Publishing wrote this one. And they have brigadieros in here. And those are like small truffles, chocolate truffles. And you only need like 
out four ingredients, butter and condensed milk and cocoa, and you just kind of cook it and put it all together, a little bit of vanilla, and then once you get your fudge balls, you roll them in sprinkles, and they're delicious. You can also find a rice pudding in there almost all the different countries have rice puddings. Um, but this would be a great thing to do if you um, are stuck at home and you want to do a little bit of cooking. Today we're going to share head, shoulders, knees, and toes in Spanish. But first let's go over our body parts just to make sure that we know them and we'll be learning the Spanish words. Now, we're in a pandemic right now, so like I know I have to go wash my hands after I touch my face, so just letting you guys know that. So we have a head, that's cabeza, shoulders, hombros, um, knees, rodillas, and then our toes down here, pies. So we have cabeza, hombros, rodillas, pies. Ah, then we have another version here, or the second verse. Um, eyes, ojos, ears, orejas, um, boca is our mouth, and nariz is our nose. So let's go over them one more time. That's a lot of words. Um, we have cabeza, hombros, rodillas, pies, and then we're going to have ojos, orejas, boca, y nariz. Okay, and we're going to put it to head, shoulders, knees, and toes too. <clears throat> cabeza, hombros, rodillas, pies, rodillas, pies. Cabeza, hombros, rodillas, pies, rodillas, pies. Ojos, orejas, boca y nariz. Cabeza, hombros, rodillas, pies, rodillas, pies. And that's head, shoulders, knees, and toes in Spanish. Great job, everybody. Yay! Well, as we travel to Central and um, South America, we are going to make a maracas craft today. And maracas are percussion instruments, and you would you can strike a percussion instrument or you can shake a percussion instrument. And also, versions of maracas can be found all around the world. Um, Brazil, other places as well. And this is an example of what we'll be making with homemade items from home today. Um, I have my handy instructions right here, and we're going to start with some leftover eggs today. Um, and I'm going to put some rice inside the eggs. You could put beans or macaroni or rocks or really whatever you wanted to. And main thing is you don't want to fill it too full with the rice because then you won't get a nice shaking sound. So let's try this. I think I like that. Um, but, you know, if you don't have rice at home, again, beans, rocks, anything, um, you can improvise. Okay, so we've got our two um, maracas. And really, these egg shakers, you could use these for your instruments right here. You could stop. Um, but we're going to go a little bit farther today. I have a couple of spoons. And I'm going to put the big part of the spoon down in the bowl. And let's see if that is going to work. Yeah, and I'm, I'm kind of holding it together, if you could see. Um, and I take rubber bands um, to kind of hold it in place. So, and then after that, we're going to do some taping to kind of decorate it and make it look a little bit nicer. Um, and you can use any tape that you want to. Um, let's put this, I'm just going to put it up at the top. I mean, really, this could be your egg shaker uh, maraca right there too, but um, let's see if we've got some tape. This is blue. Azul is the color for blue in Spanish, by the way. And I'm going to leave my rubber band on there. You could take it off if you wanted. You need to have some scissors handy. And again, if you have masking tape, use masking tape. Oh, that's working really nice. Now I'm going to put um, some colored tape right down the center, kind of where the crack of the egg is. And that way the rice wouldn't be as prone to spilling out, I don't think. Let's see if I've got a different color here, maybe some green tape. Oh, I think green's verde, if I'm not mistaken, verde. Ooh, I'm gonna kind of do it like right down the middle. Good thing is there's no right or way wrong to do this, you guys. Ooh, now you, you could go and you could do lots more tape if you wanted to. We're just kind of showing you how to do it today. Oh, that's nice. And I want to thank you guys for sharing um, some time with me. We were going to go back over, I think, some of the animals. Um, 
I believe we have Cerdo, and this would be the pig. Um, we had Cucaracha, Cockroach Martina. I like to say Cucaracha. Um, we had the Raton, the rat. Um, we had Un Gallo, the rooster. Uh, we had Un Gato, the cat, the very beautiful cat. And we had Oveja, the sheep. And oh, and this is one thing I I can't roll my R's, but it should be P E R R O, and I try and do a pero, but you drag that out a little bit. But I'm not very good at rolling my R's. Sometimes we make mistakes, and we just try and try again. And that's the great thing about learning a language is the younger you learn it, the more it sticks, and it's actually stored in a different part of your brain if you learn it when you're very young than when you're older, so you're not translating back and forth. It just, it comes out so naturally. So I hope this has inspired you to learn a language, and thank you for joining me today.